Welcome, Mike. How are you today? I'm very well. How are you, Dan? I'm good. We were just discussing because it, it feels like you're sort of on my my show every five minutes, but uh, it's actually not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the case. It was actually September the second. It's almost five months. Bizarrely, I don't know where that's gone. Um, have you missed me? <laughs> I have actually. I've I've been looking forward to uh, any opportunity to get you on the show, but when we were talking on September the second. That was with Doug Emsley, and we were talking about the acquisition of Raccoon, which obviously the business you founded by, and I'm going to get this right, Call Bay Capital, spelled C U I L Bay Capital. And you were, you and Doug were obviously telling me all about what it was and what it's going to do, and it's obviously started to do that. So just before we talk about the recent acquisition of Abilities Expo in the USA, um, for those that aren't aware, Tell us a little bit bit about Call Bay Capital again, please. Yeah, so Call is is Call Bay is an investment vehicle, and it, essentially it's it's privately funded, and and Doug's leading that vehicle. And what they wanted to do is invest and partner with entrepreneurs to help them scale up their businesses. And and the pitch to me was actually it'll, it'll sort of supercharge your business and will help you get a lot farther and a lot faster. Than you could do sort of without us and sure. you know that's a great sales pitch but the reality of it is it's kind of works like that actually the deal we did five months ago you know was, was really easy and really smooth the input that we've had from the board and we've, we've had some really we've now got dan and doug sat on our board from cool bay and they've been awesome they they've helped us really improve the structure within our business but also build in the capacity for us to go out and do things like this, which is is grow, and we're on a significant buy and build strategy now, and yeah, it, it's just really worked, and we will have doubled our business in five months, yeah. and we have a huge pipeline of things that we're going to do as well beyond that. So we really have rocket charged it. It's it's amazing. It's been really good. So as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first acquisition, both under Cool Bay and via Raccoon, or have there been others? Wait, it's Raccoon's third acquisition, okay. uh, but it's it's our most significant. Okay. It's a seven-show business in the States. It was sure. an established business that had actually been running since 1979. And they've got seven shows all across America, and it's all focused at the disabilities market sure. and giving people access and equipment to help them live more healthy and active lives, which ties in very much with what we're about as a business. So before we get into the Abilities Expo, the recent acquisition that you announced a couple of days ago uh remind us of the two previous ones then that have happened between september and now yeah so we bought an event in the states called snowbound which traded for the second time in november just gone that's gone gangbusters that's been absolutely amazing for us and then we purchased the allergy and free from show yes which we will trade for the first time in june this year yes. and that is head on i mean you, you speak the language it's, it's up on critical path yeah. it looks like it's going to fly so yeah. yeah i feel like that's going to be a win as well so we, we've actually been quite lucky with everything so far that we've acquired and yeah you know we spend a lot of time really researching a it has to fit the overall vision of our business we don't want to just buy random stuff and try and glue it all together sure and so it's our goals are to be in healthy, active and sustainable markets. Yeah. When we were acquired by Cool Bay, we, we had sort of two strategic aims. One was to balance the UK and the US and make sure that we had a more diverse portfolio. So th this acquisition of abilities does that because it gives us another seven shows in the US. But then we also wanted to have B2C and B2B. Um, and that, that's probably the next move that we'll make. You'll see a couple of things coming out from us in the B2B space. Exciting. Okay, so... You made a couple of acquisitions before, but this is the most significant. I should say you've mentioned the words critical path. I have to say, I think you're the first person in 200 episodes, funnily enough, to say that. And really, I should have some sort of horn because I try and ban, you know, corporate speak and <laughs> other words like KPIs and, and, and all that sort of stuff. But just because it's you, Mike, you're a nice chap. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you get away with it. So tell me, Abilities Expo. How do you go about um, identifying, and you know that's that that size of 
opportunity? You know, we were speaking off air, sort of, you know, is it is it just contacts? Talk to me about how this came about. It's, it's a couple of things, really. It's it, it, largely that it's contact driven in the first step. We we use brokers sometimes, so we work a lot with uh, Steve Monington and Mayfield. Yep. So they're, they're, yep. Yeah, they're great in terms of yep. sort of providing stuff to us. I'm in a media entrepreneurs networking group, which Collingwood organized. So that's, that's yep. another good source of connections and leads for us, but I go to everything. And you're also a friend of the show, Piers Byrne co-host. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think, I think that's important. You've got to network, you've got to go out and you've got to see these things. And, you know, Doug and I are both you know, pretty active in, in the scene and we, you know, you can't get me off LinkedIn. So hopefully people know who we are and we know who a lot of people are and then People sometimes come to us with ideas, people who are looking to exit, and then sometimes we approach organizations that we think would be a good fit to acquire. Um, but again, that ties back to having that core vision as to what you want to be. Yeah. So we know what sectors we want to operate in. So we're quite specific about that. And at the moment, our core markets, the UK and the US. Mm -hmm. So that that will change in time, but for the, for the short term, that's the play. And they've got seven exhibitions. If I'm looking down, honestly, I'm reading from this press release. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to make I'm not going to make out remembering all this stuff. But there, there's seven exhibitions running across the USA. As you said, provide solutions for people with disabilities, their families and their carers and 30,000 visitors. So not insignificant. How much do you pay for it? Can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was. It, and, and I will use the same line that Doug used when you asked us that question before, which is in in their mind, probably not enough. And in my yeah. mind, probably too much. One day, <laughs> someone's going to answer that question. <laughs> one day, one day's gonna it won't be me. Answer that OK. And in terms of the owners that are currently there, do they stay with the business? Give us a flavor. They sort of, you know, they're obviously instrumental. How do you make sure that? you have continuity of, you know, because they, they've built a community, right? And they know how to talk to them, similar to obviously what you've done with the, the run show and others. How do you keep that continuity going and uh, authenticity with the community? Yeah, it's really important. It's And, and it's it's kind of very much in the DNA of, of Doug's vision for Cool Bay, which is that you don't buy something and then try and change it. Actually, you don't try and make them work in your sort of formula or use your system straight away. I mean, obviously you're going to try and make things easier, but don't just try Don't buy something great and then break it by trying to change it. So that starts with the people. So the first thing we wanted to do was meet all of the people. And so I've actually spoken to everybody in the team. They're all awesome, by the way. And they, most of them have been there for a, a really long time. And, and that's kind of a sign of the culture and a sign of the sort of the respect and the passion that they have for the community that they work in. So yeah, we wanted to make sure that they all felt comfortable. They knew who we were. They knew we weren't these big faceless ogres that were going to come in and change things. And, and there will be things that do change eventually, but actually that should be through the entrepreneur that should be doing the things that they've always wanted to do, but haven't for, for whatever reason. And actually we should enable them to progress the business in the direction that they choose rather than try and set a direction for them. So Lou's staying on. So Lou is, is is the driver of the business, Lou Shoma. He's been brilliant throughout the process. People in the industry know who Lou Shoma is. He's one of the most connected guys in, in the US. And David, who founded the business with Lou, he's actually moving on, but David and Lou had kind of already sort of split some of that in the past anyway. So Lou was principally running the business, but he will stay. And I know on previous conversations we've had, you spoke a lot about data. I can't remember how many sort of records you had from your existing shows. But am I right in the assumption that because these aren't just events, they've got, you know, some digital assets, I think a shop as well. I guess that's also very much of interest to Raccoon specifically. Yeah, we like cross promotional opportunities with, with the rest of your portfolio. Would that be right? That's, that's exactly right. I mean, we, we will, by the end of this year, probably have a million data records, you know, with, with quite significant data points across those. In terms of the, the abilities asset and what's really exciting about it is they've got this really loyal and engaged community, as I say, they've been running shows since 1979. And actually the digital part of the business is, is probably the biggest opportunity. They, they have this audience of people that wants to connect and buy and, and they trust the brand, but actually they haven't possibly sort of fulfilled the opportunity there around the digital side. And that's one of the things that 
Lou's asked me to to look into as to how we might support as, as they develop. Right. And how does one go about doing that? So you've got all potentially disparate data sets, you know, sitting on different systems, because it's, as you say, it's very, you know, you can buy a business, but you then got to integrate it. How, how does one start that process? I, I think carefully <laughs> is, is the answer. So there's, there's all sorts, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier to manipulate data in the US than it is here, but we're a UK domicile company, so we're very careful around how we handle consumer data in particular. I, I think it's more about taking a niche narrowcast approach to, to how you target messages to broader community, as you would do with any event. You, you, you interact with them the same way online. I think there is an opportunity for us to specifically talk to this community digitally 365 days a year. So that's the first port of call. Test a few things, look at some of the things that we do in the UK that work, see how we can bring that over. So there is already a fledgling marketplace, which Lou has put in place for the abilities show and it's and it's it's okay. But actually we think we could do better and, and we've we've had our first chat about that and, and what more that they could do. And so we're gonna look at investing into that. They're looking at launching their first podcast. We've got a couple of podcasts that are working quite well over here with, with some of our products. So it's about sort of sharing the, the things that we've done and seeing how they can be applied, not maybe copying and pasting them, but sort of taking the learnings and, and sharing them. Sure. So that's 17 events now Raccoon have got in the US and it's, it states here in your press release. No, no, in the UK and the US. Sorry, let's start again. Yeah, so that's seventeen events. Yeah. Oh, let's start again. That's seventeen events that Raccoon have now got across the UK and the US. Mm. Yeah, and the, the the release that you put out suggested that you've got more launches and acquisitions to be announced later in this this year. So I'm assuming you're talking to other companies and individuals at the moment. Can you give us? Obviously, you might not be able to name names, but can you give us a flavour? <laughs> is that B two B as you mentioned, or is that still in the B two C? arena so there's there's two smallish b2b launches that we that we are pretty set on and they should be released in the next couple of months there's one significant b2c b2b mix that we yeah. hope to launch i can't give you a time frame on that and then we are taught we're probably having serious conversations without with about a dozen significant businesses some b2c some b2b wow. okay. across the uk and the us there's about a hundred things in our pipeline that there's a lot of businesses out there looking to yeah. scale up, either looking for capital or an exit. And you yeah. know, we're, we're quite open that that's what we want to do. We want to buy and build. Yeah. Seems to be lots and lots of acquisition activity going on at the moment. I mean, I'm yeah, impressed. Do you, do you come up it's... against the same companies each time when you're, when you're talking or would you find that because you're re quite niche, you know, that you're, the one of not that many one of a couple i think yeah. there's there's a, a a shortage of buyers in the market at the moment there seems to be a lot of people looking to sell that's my personal opinion i, I can't really quantify that but i'm certainly hearing that from other businesses as well what we want is quality assets and things that you know are well run and have an opportunity to grow we we definitely want to do a couple more deals quite quickly so we're, we're in the market yeah. Depending I'm, not on the scale, you on the just... I'm not having you on the gate. I'm not having you. This is your one. This is your one. You get once a quarter. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll send you an email about the next one. I'll send Doug on. Um, but no, I, I, I would, I would hope that we can do one more deal in the next quarter, and then, yeah, we'll see how they. If it's significant, that probably will be our only deal yeah. for the short term. But the joy about having access to the capital and the sort of the ambition of Cool Bay is, if the right thing comes up, we'll move on it. Sure. But what I want to make sure that we don't do is we don't grow so fast that the wheels come off and we don't bed things in properly. So I just want to make sure that, that whatever we buy, we add value to. Sure. And what about you yourself? You know, when we spoke once the acquisition of Raccoon had happened in September, you know, you spoke to the, the fact that you're going to take a slightly different role. I also read recently on your post on LinkedIn that for the first time you didn't attend one of your shows, I think in Boston. <laughs> How's it going for you? You know, this is this is new. This is Mike Seaman walking around the US with a with a stack full of cash trying to buy up businesses. It's a very different, you know, role. So tell me about that. How you I, getting... it's, so the, the first thing is I'm, I'm a control freak entrepreneur. So to not go to a show <laughs> and to sit at home at the weekend waiting, waiting for someone to WhatsApp me how it's all going is, 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 is a learning experience. And actually, but actually what was brilliant and, and credit to our team is 
I didn't need to be there. They actually did an amazing job. The show is wicked. And if I'd have been there, I probably would have just interfered. And, you know, I think actually we've, we're really lucky that we've got a solid team of people here and they don't really need me to, to go and be on site at a show. They know how to run a show. So that, that's quite nice. I think my new role, which is, so Joe as our COO, she's, she's pretty much her role is to, to sort of grow the business and sorry, to run the business. And my, my job is to grow the business. So I'm looking at acquisitions and launches while she's looking at sort of the day to day running of the business. And actually we've got a really good relationship and she's amazing. She is really, really smart. And without her support, I don't think I could have done it, but so for me personally, it's fun. I get to do all the cool stuff. I get yeah, to go and talk to entrepreneurs, yeah, explore new markets, launch yeah. stuff, yeah. all the stuff that gets me excited. Yeah. Yeah. And and I know that I'm building a house on safe foundations because yeah. Joe, Natalie and Steve, who are the senior leadership team, are sort of keeping it rolling. Mike, it's always a pleasure. It's good to see your continued growth. Whenever I speak to you, I remind, I'm reminded of when I spoke to you in your converted garden in the shed. shed during lockdown i think it was like october november 2020 and you know look where you are now <laughs> so congratulations <laughs> i'll see you in a couple of weeks when you announce your next acquisition <laughs> <laughs> thanks mate thank you for having us on